Hey everybody and welcome back. If this is your first time, this is Tattoo Collectibles and I am your host Eric. Today on the show, we got some pretty special stuff. We've got, uh, and this is an all flash episode. We got a ton of flash in the mail. We got some real special stuff and then we got some real, real special stuff. I'm gonna throw it over to what's in the mail, Eric, and he's gonna show you because I can barely contain him today, and he's been a little much. So, hey, oh, hey, before hey, I throw you over yet? to him, yeah, it'll be a second. Calm down. Before I throw you over to him, I want to let you know that uh, our thousand subscriber giveaway is coming up. If you're liking these videos, please, please subscribe and hit the notifications bell, and then you'll be in on all of the bevy of goodies that we've got coming. And I don't want to see anybody miss out on that. So, all right, right, we're getting there. We're gonna throw it over to uh, What's in the Mail, Eric, before he has a embolism, and uh, I'll see you here in just a few. What's in the mail? Jiminy, I thought that guy had never shut up. So anyway, We've got a bevy of cool stuff in the mail today, and we are gonna start out with this one right here. And like you said, I can barely contain myself today. This one is uh, from uh, Largo, Florida. Now this gentleman said that, uh, that he bought these in, uh, oh, back in the 80s, and um, he's been sitting on them ever since. And I, I didn't have any of these, so I thought, no, that'll be cool. Well, let's try out one of those. Ugh. So, what he sent me, and I don't know if y'all know this about me, but I love pork chop sheets. Now, they called them pork chop sheets because back in the day, little, little designs um, were three or five bucks, you know? And with three or five dollars, you'd get a pork chop dinner. So that's why they call these pork chop sheets. Now, this particular pork chop sheet is from a man named Mike Malone. So any of y'all out there in the know, you know who Mike Malone is. Now this is a beautiful uh, 15 by 20 pork chop sheet. It's a great big sheet. Um, they are rimmed with that, uh, that black frame. If you see them, those are legit. And I could tell by the, by the smell on this one. Plus, see that? That's where it's been rolled and sat for years. Um, this one is from 1982, uh, drawn in 1981. So he drew him in 81, released him in 82. This is just a time capsule of cool stuff from Mike Malone right here, let me tell you. I'm gonna get you some really great pictures of this one. Um, now, I did, I did pay a premium on this one. Um, this one was $140. I did not think that was too much. Um, but yeah, you can even, you can see where, so that's, that's where the rubber bands were, see them? So see, when it was rolled up, that is all the discoloration. So you can tell this thing was rolled, rubber banded, and left for a decade or so. We feel lucky here to have this. This one will be going in a frame. Um, I've got a really great uh, Mike Malone card to go with that. It's a Mike Malone Scott Sterling card from China Sea. All right, this next one comes from Denver, Colorado. So, Fast Mofo Eddie. Not Freddy, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie Svetich. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Eddie. If I'm not, please comment down below and give me a phonetic spelling. So, um, Eddie has a enormous collection of authentic badass stuff. And he just bought him some land and he's getting rid of some stuff now. And I just took that trip with, um, to see Rich and all them and learned a bunch about Al Shifley while I was there. Now, what I have here is an original piece of Al Shifley uh, production flash. Now this is the, oh, and, woo, you can smell the antiquity on this one, ladies and gentlemen. This is definitely an authentic sheet. Not that I had any, any inkling to think from uh, Eddie that it would be anything but. Uh, he does nothing but quality. 
uh, he's about as trustworthy as they come from people that I buy from. But this is a hand colored, hand done um, production sheet from, uh, from Al Shifley. Now I'd seen this sheet before and I couldn't figure out where I'd seen it. Well, number 161 from Spalding. That's exactly where I saw it. Now, the one from Shifley has dot shading. The one from uh, Spalding has flick shading. That and a, and a little bit of uh, a little bit around the eyes are different, but for the most part, they stayed pretty true. Okay, so what would happen is uh, guys would come up with badass looking designs like this and Huck would buy them. And when Huck bought them, he would have Don Nolan or whoever redraw them. And then he would sell the sheets uh, with a different number on them. Now this sheet is a shop used, this one's not. This is not a shop used piece. Uh, I bought this in a lot. Uh, I think I got 200 sheets from Spalding and uh, that came in it. Uh, this one, uh, I wish I had two or 300 sheets of this one. Uh, this one um, is, uh, is, is the original uh, production of, this, uh, of these pieces. I think these are beautiful. Um, when I was in um, Bidwell, Ohio with Rich, Rich gave me a, um, a card from Al Shifley and a stencil from Al Shifley. At the Tattoo Historical Society meeting two years ago, I purchased an Al Shifley undrilled, unbuilt frame from somebody down there. I can't remember who, uh, it's, that meeting is so, uh, so awesome that it's like, it's like being in a candy shop, you know, there's just so much to see and so much for sale that you get lost real quick. And I didn't get everybody's names, but, um, but I bought that. So I'm going to put all of that together. Now, somebody suggested that I should, should frame these two together. Um, but I don't know if I want to do that. I might frame them separately and hang them close to each other. Uh, but I definitely, I ordered this specifically to go in my Al Shifley collection. Uh, I think I paid around a hundred bucks for this. Uh, I would have been comfortable up to 200 on this. These old production sheets, especially, you know, and you can tell when you look at this one, you can tell that was used in a shop. Somebody took off all the price tags. I wish they'd left them on. I love to know the old prices. Uh, they tend to be either about the same or double what they are today. Um, Eddie, man, this is just beautiful. I, I thank you so much for for letting this piece land in my collection, and uh, it'll never come out. So there you go. That that one just thrilled me, you know, getting that one. Uh, I can't wait to display that one. That one will be going up uh, in the shop uh, in the Al Shifley corner um, or, you know, the Al Shifley uh, display. Now, last but certainly not least. So, if I held this box up, there you go. That's where it came from. It came from Voorheesville. Now, I just went out to Voorheesville and talked with uh, Bill, the, uh, the owner, and Jay from, uh, from Spalding Rogers. They were, to say that they were accommodating is probably the biggest understatement that I've ever said. Their generosity embarrassed me. Uh, the, the guys out there are super, super guys. So every now and then they'll put something up on eBay for sale. Not a ton of stuff, but every now and then. They put up a bunch, and they've, they've had these in their collection for years. Uh, they bought out a um, picture machine. So they sold 50 sheets of picture machine. Now these are, it's new old stock. These are from back in the day. Um, but while I was in there, and like, 
if you ever if you ever get the opportunity to go see um, Spalding and Rogers, don't hesitate. If you're near Voorheesville, stop in and see them. Uh, they've got a retail store with just everything in it. They've got all the flash. They've got, it's just, it's it's overwhelming what they have. Uh, they bought out Jensen back when Jensen had a, a supply. They, they Huck bought them out. So they've got a bunch of, you know, a bunch of stuff to see. So while I was out there, my very first tattoo was a very small rose that I've since had covered. My second tattoo though, was a dragon by Ted Naden. And I still carry it, there he is. He's, he's, a, little, he's a little dry, but that, that's him right there. 18 years old in the military. I saw this piece from the chair while I was getting tattooed the first time and thought, that's my next one. And I even told the guys, like, that's my next one. It came off of Sheets 292T. And I mentioned that to him while I was out at Spalding Rogers. He said, well, we're, we don't have any of those right now, but we still have the masters of every, wow, of every sheet that we've ever sold. He goes, so I'll be sure and get you one. He goes, I'll send it and you can do what's in the mail with it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Just like I had suspected, these guys always keep their word. They are, I've dealt with them before, and they are nothing but genuinely cool guys out there. So if you're ever near Voorheesville, do yourself a favor and stop in and see them. They sent me that sheet free of charge uh, just because it was my, my very first, you know, badass tattoo. I could not be happier seeing this. I am going to, uh, Chances are this sheet's gonna get painted and hung and never leave my shop. So, back to the story at hand. So, I saw on eBay that they had a bunch of picture machine from 1975. So I bought one through 50. Now, picture machine, like when they purchased picture machine, they, they still used the same uh, uh, sheets, just like they did with that Al Shifley sheet. Um, they redrew them. I don't know if they redrew drew these a whole bunch. Uh, it still looks like Pat Marty Nook's work to me. Um, with the exception of the shading. I believe the shading is slightly different just like it was with the, uh, with the Al Shifley sheet. But this is, um, and I, I'll hold them up so you can see them. I bought a block. Uh, this is 50, this is one through 50. Uh, just the coolest looking um, stuff that you've ever seen from Picture Machine. And Tommy was telling me um, that uh, the way you can tell that, because it's still, it says, even on them, let me get, let me get one that's just one here. Let's get the number one sheet. You'll still see, you won't see anything that says Spalding and Rogers on them. You still see the picture machine and, and a little number. He said that the, the Spalding numbers were smaller, I believe, and that the picture machine numbers were bigger. So if, you, if you've got a sheet and you're wondering, is that a picture machine or is it a Spalding Rogers? Uh, if it's got a smaller number on it, I believe that that is one of the Spalding Rogers. The larger numbers are from, um, from Pat Marty and Nick. Now these are on uh, nice thick uh, paper. Uh, I love these. And from the, let's see. Hmm. Let's get them all up so we can give, the, give it the smell test here. Oh yeah. So the smell is the teller on those, as it always is. So 50 sheets. These these are 50 of the of just the coolest you know sheets you can get. Uh, they didn't have many available. Um, I think I paid two hundred dollars for 50 sheets. And right now you're seeing them go on eBay 10, 20, 30 bucks a sheet. If you want authentic. Do you tattoo? That's the name on eBay to look for. Do you tattoo? It's all one word. 
The address will be Voorheesville, New York. Those are the Spalding guys. If you see stuff for sale and you're wondering if it's authentic or if it's not, if you see the Voorheesville address on there, guaranteed you're getting the real deal. Um, any place else, I can't say that every place else you're not getting the real deal because that wouldn't be true either. But at least from this place, you know for a fact that what you're getting is going to be 100% authentic. Um, I want to thank Bill, uh, first off, for being so accommodating. Wait till you see that. Uh, that's going to be a couple weeks from now. But wait till you see that tour. That tour is amazing. Uh, I saw some stuff out there that A, I didn't know, and B, I didn't know they were still doing. Um, and they, they just released their lightweight sand cast. I tried to get one, but they were already sold out of their first run of them. So when you see them, get them, because they're gonna be like the, uh, um, the um, Supreme sand cast that I got. You'll definitely want one of these. So keep an eye out on Spalding Rogers. Type new into their um, their search engine, and it'll show you everything new that's up. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's kind of hard to find on their site. Um, but uh, I would like to thank uh, Bill and the guys at, uh, at Spalding and Rogers for sending me my, my second tattoo ever. Uh, that will be cherished and hung in this shop, and you guys are awesome if I haven't mentioned that already. So uh, we're gonna go back to introduction Eric now. He's, uh, he's getting a little getting a little antsy over there. So we're gonna bring him back in and uh, let him introduce the next thing. Whew, okay. Hopefully that guy didn't get on your, on your nerves too much. So the next thing I've got for you today is a awesome interview that I went out to Albany, New York and got. I got there about 10.30 in the morning um, I left them about 9.30 that night. We had a full day together uh, with uh, Tommy Spaulding and his lovely wife, Mary. Um, they are a wealth of knowledge about this industry. I found so much out from these two. I didn't realize, didn't realize, I didn't know that uh, Huck always had a professional photographer with him, no matter where he was going, he always had one with him. That's why you see so many great pictures of Hug. Uh, so, but anyway, without too much further ado, we're gonna get to this interview. You're definitely gonna wanna see this one, so stick around. So today we're sitting here with Tommy Spaulding. Uh, super excited to be here, Tommy. Well, thank um, you. So I've been sitting here with you all today and visiting and seeing this immense, amazing collection and was hoping that you would uh, show us a couple pieces and tell us a little bit about them. Well, you know, growing up in the tattoo business, I got exposed to an awful lot of famous tattooers, but back in the day, I didn't really know that they were famous. And today they're icons, you know, people just, anything to find out about these people. And they used to come to the house like everyday people. But I'll tell you, it's, uh, it's been a great experience. And being, uh, being the son of a, a legacy, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. You know, my dad was very, very uh, helpful to a lot of people. And I'm sure they're very grateful for what he done for them. And uh, I'm, I'm sure this, this business is going to go on forever. Uh -huh. I can see it because he carries a memory. And that's all we got. But this is a, this piece here, this was given to my dad from Jerry Swallow. Jerry was a one hell of a stencil cutter, drawer, artist, tattooer. And most of all, person. He was it was pretty amazing. He'd come to the house and you'd sit around and you'd talk to these people and he'd 
you just didn't know enough about them. You know, you see things and hear things about them, and then you go, wow, this is really him. You know, and it, it, it's kind of overwhelming sometimes. And you see Jerry sign his name down in the bottom. The man could, he could draw and cut stencils like nobody's business. Now, was that uh, used on someone, or uh, did he just cut that one uh, as, a, as a gift? No, it was used. Jerry, uh, Jerry was a hell of a tattooer. Or is a hell of a tattooer, I shouldn't say. <laughs> Not was, but it, we all have our heydays. Oh, and, yeah. And that's for sure. And uh, unfortunately, we don't get to keep them. We keep the memories. Right. Like myself from being retired. You know? So now, how long did you tattoo? Uh, approximately about 40, almost 45 years. So I've done my time. I'm retired. I'm enjoying it. Uh, unfortunately, tattooing is probably like a lot of other uh, careers that you get into. You do them, you love them, you get out of them, and then you find out how much you really love them because you miss them. Right. And you like being around it, and sometimes it, it, it's a good feeling, and sometimes it's a bad feeling because you can't do it anymore. But you admire the people that are still doing it because you know what? Their heart and soul is into it. It's, um, it, it's nice to know that you put on a piece of history and it's going to be there long after you're gone. And you're talking about it and other people talk about it. Say, so, yes, he done that for me. You remember doing that? Not really, but I know it was a moment in time. And that's all we have. Right. A moment in time that, that hold us all together as people. So what year do you think that was from? Gotta be, it's gotta be back. It's it's gotta be back from the seventies. Yeah, it's back there. But let me tell you, real men got tattoos like that. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> and you said that your dad could outline that in an hour. Well, realistically, I I, I was kind of fudging it a little. Bit. Okay. Just a little. <laughs> but just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, most guys, I, it would take them, you know, the better part of a day just to get that out. I, right I would probably say it'd be a Quite a few hours, mm -hmm. probably probably five six hours. That's still lightning fast for but, something that big. But when he put an outline down, it wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> I've seen work that he's put on 40, 50 years ago. Outlines are just they're clean. His work was unmistakable. You could go all around the country and see people, and they'd say, "That's a Huck Spoiling tattoo." I know. <laughs> you know it no matter where you saw it. Yeah, people people definitely recognized his work, and it was long lasting. It was amazing. Um, hurt when he tattoo you, but it was forever, and he meant forever. <laughs> so now you said that he only he pulled out a very little, tiny bit of his needle. Oh yes, my dad my dad worked a very very short stroke. Uh, I'd say. Um, Maybe eighth of an inch. It was it was very shallow, but he run the tip right on the skin. Right, just ride that tube right on. Ride it right on there. But I'll tell you what, his line work is just as clean. Be very proud of that, to, to to see that he was my dad. I'll tell you, um, if ever you thought about a person that you really looked up to, can't never knowing that you'd ever get up to that level because that's a, that's a pretty high uh, that's a pretty high expectation to get up to that level it takes a lot of years so and he quit tattooing in 75 yeah now is that's the year you started tattooing wasn't it? uh pretty pretty close to that uh i was basically learning uh, the manufacturing and when i was in grade school I would go downstairs and wind coils and uh, put parts on frames. In grade school? In grade school, yeah. Putting parts on frames. Of course, I always had an issue with putting the washers on. I put the washer on upside down sometimes. Or shiny, as he said, shiny side up. <laughs> and I had an issue with that for a while. So I'd have to redo them. But that was okay. Um, so a bunch of the flat side Supremes from the 70s came from your hand. Uh, yeah, putting parts on for sure. Then winding coils. We uh, 
we got into that, and that was a very hands-on process, like spiking coils and making uh, making parts. It was uh, very uh, educational. Didn't realize how educational it really was at the time until I grew up and became part of my my living. You know, to sit down and have a bunch of parts and just like a like an A one mechanic. You know, you you know your game. So. So now, did you apprentice under your dad? Uh, I, I don't know if you'd call it apprentice. It was, how should I say? I think you know, it was just, I grew up under my dad. And whatever he was putting out for me to grasp, it was there. And all I had to do was ask for it. You know, how do you do this? How do you do that? And he, uh, it's, it's kind of like being an apprentice. Um, kind of like a journeyman almost too, you know, because you do one step at a time and uh, he take you along the journey. So it's, it's been wonderful. So you were born into an apprenticeship. <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty much, yeah, pretty much. I, I enjoyed it. And, you know, I do different things for him outside the tattooing too, which made, it, made him much more of a father, which, you know, we did a lot of personal things together and we really thoroughly enjoyed each other. Which is, which is nice to say because you hear a lot of people unfortunately don't get to get that in their life. You know, and he was always there, always there, thick and thin. Family sticks together. Nice, nice. Yeah. So now the uh, from from what you were saying earlier, the the ones that were cross hatched mm -hmm. were uh, directly off of someone's skin. Off of someone's skin, and they were traced off, and you had to you had to sand these first. And then you would sketch it off of here, and then you cut out the stencil. So they sanded them to have the pencil stick to them. Right. Huh. Yeah. And then they would cut the stencil directly from the pencil marks. Correct. Amazing. And that's Sailor Ned? Oh, Sailor Burner. Yeah. yeah. Now, as far as the, um, uh, and I know everybody's going to want to know this, as far as the, uh, when you were building the Supremes, they were sand cast. Did you sand cast those right there? Uh, no. No, they were done in, they were done in foundries. They'd actually come in and they pour them and, and then we get the rough, the rough cut of the frame itself and then everything else was uh, basically done by hand, the filing and the leveling and, and um, then they'd have to be, after they were filed and dressed and they'd have to be all put, in a cast, and then you would drill them, um, drill the different size holes that you need for the coils and then the connections for the tops of the machines and the holes in the backs of the arms. Um, but the, I think that the toughest part of the whole thing was getting the bottom plate on the frames level because that was all done by hand and eye. Oh, so it was in a in a vice? In a vice. And then just hand done. You filed them off, got them smooth, and then once they got through that, then they went and they got chrome plated. And then once they got chrome plated, you bring them back, and then we're hand assembled, and then you would first start off with your binding post, set up that first, and then put your front coil in, put your armature bar on, Set your, set your armature bar to your coil. But unfortunately, in the filing process, it never was perfect. So you would get this, this, you get a fluctuation. So, and as Pop always said, your tube came up at the front to make sure your, your tube was straight up and down. So you didn't have one tilting out. So that was, that was key first. And then you concentrated on setting the coil. And a lot of times what we used to use would be brass shims on the sides and on the backs. So you're talking shims that were like paper thin just to set that coil. And that was the whole key was to get that coil to sit flush with a little bit of tension in the back for your re recoil. Um, then the rest of it was pretty basic, wiring up the back coils and stuff. But... Uh, it was, it was a, a really enjoyable experience learning. I mean, guys would give their right arm to learn that. 
Yeah, and there's guys out there today couldn't build a machine to save their soul. <laughs> but you know right. what? It, it, it's just like anything else. If you grow up in the business, it becomes part of you. Something you never lose. I always say skill is something you take forever. They can't take that away from you. There you go. You know, you can learn. You take your job, you never take the skill. All right, so that's uh, that's the uh, the first part of that one. You'll see the rest of that one next time. Man, I had such, like I said, I had such a great time with Tommy and Mary. I do plan on going again. Um, the amount in their collection is immense. Uh, I didn't film a bunch of their collection um, because they, they are planning on coming out with a pretty comprehensive book on everything. You're definitely going to want to get your hot little hands on this book when it comes out. I am hoping, Tommy, I'm hoping out there that I'll be the first one on your list, buddy, when this thing comes out, because I will blow it up on this show. All right, that's, that's what we had for you this week. I am hoping beyond hope that you have seen something in this video that you didn't know or hadn't seen before. And until, until we meet again, what I'd like you to do, I think you're going to know. I think you know what I'm going to say. I want you to stay safe. I want you to treat each other cool. And man, oh man, I want you to keep on collecting. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And please hit the subscribe button down below and check out these videos. We worked real hard on these too. And I think if you enjoyed this one, you'll enjoy those too.